Well, still on the renewable energy angle, the Gestamp solar plant outside Prisca in the Northern Cape is expected to generate 20 megawatts of electricity. This will be fed into the national power grid and is enough to power between 15 and 20,000 homes. Let's find out now just how government plans to use alternative energy sources into the future. We're joined in the studio by Oli Lemabusela, the Director of Energy Efficiency and Environment at the, the Energy Department. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Well, Sounds like some exciting developments are happening there in the Caledon area with the windmills now up and running and the Gestamp uh, power plant uh, is, seems like it's fairly on, uh, on track. Yes, thanks, Dan. Good morning and good morning to the viewers. Y yes, the Department of Energy uh, uh, through government run two programs. So one of the programs, we call it the one that you have actually seen, we call it uh, the grid, uh, the grid connections, uh, which is actually part of a broader renewable energy independent power producers program, wh which complements uh, what government has actually been doing for a long time in, term in terms of electrification. We've electrified uh, close to around about 95% 95, 95 of the homes, but the, the power that has actually been used to electrify those particular homes have been actually based on coal-fired power stations. But now government has uh, took a decision, and then through what we call the ministerial determinations uh, in, in three windows so far, window one, window two, window three, We've actually procured quite a number of these renewable technologies: uh, solar wind, solar wind farms, uh, solar wind, solar wind, as well as uh, concentrated solar powers are one of the technologies that are actually being used in terms of that independent yeah. power producers. One of the things that one has normally when people talk about these new renewable energy uh, sources like wind and solar is the cost of it. How, how much is this? I mean, how big is this for the government? It's quite big for us because uh, uh, the first ministerial determination uh, 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 that, that the minister actually issued was around about 3,725 megawatt. And then in 2012, December, we also issued another one of 3,200 megawatt. Now we're closing, we've just recently closed what we call window three, which is the third phase of that particular renewable. The cost has been actually going down in terms of the rand per kilowatt hour or the megawatt that we're actually buying from, from the independent power producers. But secondly, w w one of the issues when we started the program was the issue of localization. I, th I think the procurement aspect or the evaluation component is focusing more on 30%, which is the socio-economic aspects. Which part of the country lend themselves better to like wind, wind power? I mean, we hear about uh, Port Elizabeth being the windy, c friendly city. Is it, I mean, are there particular parts of the country that you're targeting or any part of the country can put up the windmills? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, what, what the department has actually done, or government in general that we have actually done, we have actually issued what we call a wind atlas to allow those investors to actually focus on areas where there is strong wind. Mostly the coastal areas, more especially around the south and the, and, and the southeast coast, that actually the strongest area of wind. But if you look in terms of the solar, you'll actually go to the inland, specifically around the Northern Cape, where we actually have some concentrated solar power uh, uh, systems that are actually being est established. But secondly, uh, apart from the broader and large-scale renewable energy program, we have some small scale, which we actually now refer to as, as off-grid solution. And those small scales, for instance, do you use local production? Do you use local entrepreneurs? Is that where the government in this particular energy sector is working well with the private sector? Yes, yes. Uh, although when we started long time ago during the 2008 uh, electricity crisis, uh, wh when we actually started to roll off some of these solar home systems, the focus has been actually generally just to make sure that there is access to energy. But we have actually changed now. Uh, the Department of Trade and Industry has actually designated some of these industries, specifically the solar water heater industry has been actually designated. And then subsequent to that, the National, National Treasury has actually come up with what we call an instruction note to make it mandatory for all those who procure using the government funds to actually procure solar water systems that are actually meeting at a minimum threshold of at least 70% local. So I in that aspect, what, because some of the system that has actually been designed, they were not actually suitable for the conditions of South Africa. So once we bring the issue of localization in terms of the technology and also the issue of localization in terms of the installation, you're actually addressing the sustainability of those maintenance at those particular facilities. Okay, I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about as this program develops. And thank you very much uh, for your time this Thanks, morning. Thanks, Dan. That's uh, Olile Mabusen, the Director of Energy and Efficiency and Environment at the Energy Department. Know more about your world. ENCA.com